Welcome to Think Like a Champion. And today is our last time together in 2022 on Think Like a Champion. And as we wrap up this year, I've been taking a look back at some of our best content for 2022, the year that Think Like a Champion began. And I picked an episode that I really believe is gonna help you finish this year strong and launch you into 2023 as well. You know, one thing about champions is we finish well. And let's finish this year well. I believe today's episode is gonna help you do just that. So let's get into developing mental toughness and that extra mile mentality. It's not too late. Let's go forward and walk in the victory that God created us champions to walk in. In Jesus' name, check this out. Well, welcome to Think Like a Champion, a weekly podcast. This is episode four, where we discuss the mindsets that you need to win in every way and enjoy every day. I'm your host, Gregory Dickow. And listen, there are many things that distinguish a champion, but the most important aspect is their mindset. And once a champion gets the right mindset, you're unstoppable. And that's what God has for you. He wants you to be unstoppable. As you begin to think like a champion with me as your coach, with the word of God as our playbook, I believe you're going to step into the best days of your life. Now, listen, if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Search Gregory Dickow wherever you listen to podcasts and hit subscribe so you can catch every single episode as it is released. You can also subscribe to the Gregory Dickow YouTube channel if you want to watch these on video. And as always, I want to invite you to partner with me in helping us move this mission forward. Your gift of any amount makes an impact, a huge impact in how many people we can reach. I'm going to do everything I can to bring you value and through the word of God and the spirit of wisdom. And if you feel this adds value to your life in any way, pay it forward. Consider partnering with me to help more people experience this life of victory. This is what God's called us to, a life of victory. You can partner with me now at lifechangerschurch.com slash give. You can sow your seed, you can plant, you can give. And I want to thank you in advance for doing so. So let's get into today's content. And I'm going to talk to you like um, the way I would talk to my kids when they were younger and the, what I wanted for them and what I wanted to see in their life to see them become champions. I always called my son's champ growing up from the early days, uh, from the earliest days, really. And out of that nickname champ to all my sons and, you know, of course, my daughters, they're champions, too, but it's a different word. Uh, but you, you understand the point. And when I was raising my boys and calling them champ, it was just it came natural to me. I saw them that way. I thought of them that way. I thought of them as champions. I wanted to instill in them champion mindsets. And out of there emerged, out of that word champ or champion, emerged our a youth movement that my son started to, um, to champion youth, as well as this, this podcast now. It started as our Wednesday service, then it turned into our moments experience, and now it's Think Like a Champion. And this is the overflow of how we grew up, how my kids grew up. I didn't grow up this way. I didn't know what it meant to think like a champion. So I had to learn through the school of hard knocks. Anybody been there? Anybody got their degree from there? I've got a bachelor's degree from there, a master's degree from there, a uh, school of hard knocks. I got a PhD from there. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I've had a lot of hard knocks in life. And the champion mindset is what I constantly tried to instill in my kids and it's what I want to instill in you, what it takes to, to think like a champion. You know, the Bible says that, that we are more than conquerors through the love of Jesus Christ. We're more than conquerors. There's, the, there's not a lot that could be said higher than that. You can't really graduate to a higher level than more than beyond more than champions. I mean, or more than conquerors, which is the same word, ultimately, the word Conqueror comes from the word Nike in Greek, and it's the word, well, it's where we get the word Nike, from, where it's where the Nike brand came from this Greek word Nike, which means victory. It means conquer. And so when the Bible says that God has made us more than conquerors through Jesus Christ's love, we're more than conquerors. 
It means we're more than victorious. We're more than just experiencing victory. We are. This is our identity. We're champions. We're conquerors. We're more than conquerors. And I want you to start thinking like that. And I want to encourage you and challenge you like you want to set yourself apart from who you used to be. Right. You want to set yourself apart from the limitations that you've had in your life. And to do that, you, you have to have what I call and what others call as well. But what I want to focus on today is you have to have mental toughness. Like if you're going to win in life, you got to have mental toughness. You got to have grit. You've got to be able to take a hit. You got to be able to take the blows that life brings. You have to be able to take the hits, the knocks that life brings. And you have to be strong in your mind. You're not going to you, you can't become strong physically without becoming strong mentally. Mental toughness will produce strength in every area of your life. And I like to think of this word mental toughness. I, I, I think of this verse in first Peter, chapter one, verse 13. And and take a moment right now. And if you know somebody who wants to be a champion, wants to live like more than a conqueror, text them, message them, get this webcast, get this podcast in front of them because it will change their life. Mental toughness is what will prepare you for anything that comes in life. Mental toughness will make you ready to deal with any consequence, deal with any circumstance, deal with any trouble or tribulation in life, because we are going to have trouble in life. Life is filled with trouble. Life is filled with difficulty. Life is filled with challenges. And the best thing you can do is have mental toughness. And so this verse, first Peter 1, 13. So prepare your minds for action. This is a powerful verse. Prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. He says, so prepare your minds for action. Let me tell you something about action. Action is one of the great cures to anxiety. Action is one of the great cures to anxiety. We are living in. I was driving up to to work today and when I I, I was leaving right around the time kids get on the bus in the neighborhood to to get to go to school. And I saw these kids sort of gathering around this one corner and they weren't talking to each other. There was just three or four of them waiting for the bus. They were a few feet away from each other. They were all looking down. They were all they all looked sad, frankly. And I mean, I grew up feeling sad about going to school, too. So that's not necessarily uncommon. But but it was it it really grabbed me because I was looking at these kids. They were 13, 14, 15 year olds, and they looked like they were beaten. They looked like they were that they were that they had lost something. They looked so discouraged and so defeated. And I thought, wow, the kids today are not prepared by their parents or by school or by what they experience in social media. They're not prepared to be mentally tough. So many kids when stuff hits them and we've been through a lot in the last couple of years with the pandemic, but then the economy and financial issues and people losing loved ones. There was a whole lot of uh, tribulation that hit and compounded and compiled at one time. And the only the only way to be able to handle that is to prepare your mind and to to have mental toughness. And when I looked at these kids, I really felt sorry for them. And I felt like these kids could have joy. They could be happy. They could be excited they could be looking forward to conquering their day if they knew that they were champions if they somebody was telling them every day you're a champ you're a champ you're a champ you can't be beat uh, fact is is that's what Muhammad Ali had in his corner he had paid somebody he had a professional encourager he paid him at the time in the 60s fifty thousand dollars a year to just be at his ringside when he was training or fighting and tell him over and over again, you're the champ, you're the champ, you're the champ. You can't be beat. You can't be beat. 
that kind of mindset had infiltrated Muhammad Ali's head and mind and heart. And it made him mentally tough. When you look at him, he wasn't the most physically um, he wasn't the most physically dominating human, not not in the boxing ring. There were other fighters that that looked better, that prepared better, that looked maybe they prepared physically better. or They looked stronger. George Foreman, Joe Frazier. Some of these guys looked bigger and better than Ali, but none of them had his tough, his mental toughness. And that's what made him a champion multiple times. I think he was the three time heavyweight champion at the time was when when boxing was the most popular sport in the world. And his mental toughness is what made him the champion that he was. And nothing could nothing could weaken his mind. And when you get to that point where nothing can weaken your mind, when you can stand up to anything mentally, you're you're going to have wins. You're going to stack win after win after win, even losses. When you're when mentally when you're mentally tough, even losses are going to be turned into wins for you. Like you will devour even defeat, rejection, loss, all of those negative things. You'll just eat them up when you have mental toughness. You'll just like your your mind is like uh, iron teeth that just chew up failure and spit it out and chew up <laughs> defeats and chew up rejection and spit it out whenever those things hit you. I got to tell you that mental toughness is probably the number one thing that is that has gotten me this far and I've got a long way to go and I want to go further. But what's put what's gotten me through rejection, what's gotten me through betrayal, what's gotten me through people saying one thing and doing another. What's got me through legal battles, lawsuits, trying to be thrown off of our property by the law, by the by the city and by lawyers. And I mean, you could by having no money and no way to pay my bills and just having to believe God and figure it out and find a way and knock on enough doors. And I thought my life was going one way and then it got changed and I had to take a new path and I had to carve a new path and I had to learn several careers. And you got to be mentally tough and be, learn how to be a champion no matter what comes against you. And those those moments, those times when I felt like I was against the rope, those times when I felt like I had all hell breaking loose against me, those are the best times. Those are the times that forged um, an, an overcoming mindset in me that that made me hardened against failure, hardened against defeat, hardened against loss, because those things would have normally made me crumble. But by finding a way to strengthen my mind, I want to encourage you to strengthen your mind like you've got to take responsibility for being tough in your mind, not being a bully to other people, but being tough with yourself, being tough in handling whatever comes your way. Prepare your minds for action. This is what kids need. This is what adults need. Prepare your minds for action, he says. That means something. That means that you have to be ready inside before you're ready outside. And it means that action is what you need to be prepared for. Your mind needs to be ready to take action and your mind needs to know you need to tell your mind that you are going to take action. Action is the cure for anxiety. Action is the cure for depression. Now, there may be medicines and, and things that you can take to to buy you some time to become mentally tough. But no, no medicine is going to cure um, mental weakness. You hold the cure for mental weakness. You have to strengthen your mind by talking to yourself. You have to strengthen your mind by telling your mind what to think. You have to strengthen your mind by telling yourself you are more than a conqueror. You are going to make it. You can't 
let yourself come up with alibis and excuses. And really, that is the number one root of failure in life is excuse making and always coming up with an alibi for why you couldn't do what you needed to do to win. Now, I'm your pastor on Sundays, but here I'm a coach and I'm going to kick your butt because that's what we need in life. We need some discipline. We need some good old fashioned discipline in our lives. We need some good old fashioned mental toughness. We need some good old fashioned grit in our lives. We need some get up from the ground and keep moving forward attitudes. We need the attitude that Jesus had. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse three, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. This is where people faint. We don't faint in our bodies first. First, we faint in our minds. Our body becomes exhausted because our minds are exhausted. If we strengthen our minds, it will lead to strengthening our bodies and we need our bodies strengthened. One of the things that covid taught us was our immune systems were were compromised. Our immune systems as a as 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 humanity, we weren't at our best. Many of us had other ailments and other pre uh, pre existing conditions in our in our health and made us made us susceptible to the covid virus being more harmful and in many cases deadly, sadly. And I'm not saying that anybody is to blame for why there's why there was death, but we have to own our own lives physically and mentally. We have to take responsibility for ourselves. We have to take responsibility for our own health. You see, sometimes we can fool ourselves into thinking that being spiritual kind of um, compensates for not being mentally tough or for not taking care of our mind and our body. And the mind and the body need to be taken care of the same way that the spirit is spirit, soul and body are all you're made as in the you're made in the image of God with three parts, spirit, soul and body. God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We're made in his image, spirit, soul and body. And so I want you to see in this passage the ingredients for preparation, ingredients for what makes you ready for anything that comes in this world. And as I said, we we, we have to learn from what's happened in the last couple of years. Were you at your best physically? Were you at your best mentally or were you stressed emotionally anxious during that two years? Were you already anxious before that pandemic started? Were you already weak? Were you already not taking care of yourself? Like we have to give ourselves permission to take care of ourselves and to make ourselves mentally tough, mentally strong by doing tough things, by pushing ourselves, by demanding of ourselves to go the extra mile. Jesus said, if somebody asks you to go one mile, go with them, too. If somebody asks for your coat, give them your shirt. Also, there is this extra mile mentality that champions have that they don't just do the minimum, but they go extra. They take it extra at your job. Are you making that company better by your existing there, by you working there? Is that company becoming better because of you? That's what we should be contributing, making everything better, improving everything that we that we encounter in our life. And whenever we see something in a bad condition that we always make it a better situation, we make it better. We do something to move the dial. We do something to improve our life. We do something to improve the people in our lives. We do something to make them better. We do something to challenge ourselves. I want to read this verse to you in the message translation of Hebrews chapter 12. And then uh, let me talk about that for a moment. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running and never quit. 
No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of what of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish, he said, study how he did it. Study how he did it. Boys, studying is something a lot of people don't do anymore. We we gloss over things. We try to ask somebody how to do it. But boy, there's something that makes you strong when you study, whether it's studying the Bible, whether it's studying for your job, whether it's studying uh, to handle your finances better, whether it's studying to to improve yourself in school. Studying is a habit that strengthens the mind, studying something, digging deep into something, evaluating it, investigating it. This is what makes us mentally tough. This is what makes us mentally strong. It says study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. This is so powerful. He never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way, the cross, the shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, failing in your faith, Go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility that Jesus plowed through that will shoot adrenaline into your souls that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. What a powerful verse. What a powerful sentence that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. That's what we need. We're mentally weak. We need adrenaline in our souls. We we're mentally we're, we're mentally stressed. We need adrenaline in our souls. We've, we've, we're, we give up too easily and giving up at all is off the table for people that want to think like champions. Giving up at all is off the table. Quitting is off the table. You got to find another solution. Quitting is not is not an option. Failing is not is not an option. Permanently failing, I should say. Quitting or giving up is not are not options. And that's how you need to be with your finances, giving up and quitting at improving my financial picture is not an option. I'm going to improve it somehow, some way. Every day I'm going to improve my situation every day. I'm going to improve my health somehow, some way, one step towards improvement. Like you got to you've got to own this. You've got to take responsibility for this. We 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 we've been soft on ourselves long enough. We got to be tough on ourselves. We have to be our own boss. Everybody wants to have their own business, but they don't want to boss themselves. You have to boss your own soul. You have to boss your own spirit. You have to boss your own body before you can be the boss of of, of in a business. Before you can be a, a winner, a champion in business, you have to be a champion of yourself. You have to conquer yourself. The one who can conquer himself cannot be conquered. The one who conquers himself cannot be conquered. Remember that when you conquer yourself, you can't be conquered because you've already conquered yourself. When you've conquered your appetites, when you've conquered your attitudes, when you've conquered your emotions, when you've conquered your your weaknesses, you can't be conquered. When you've conquered your own excuse making, whining, alibi creating soul. When you st when you conquer that, you cannot be conquered. When you conquer the excuse making, when you conquer the negative speech and the negative talking and the negative thinking and the you, you disqualify yourself with your own words when you're negative. And that ought to be the, the first thing that you attack in your life right now is is negativity. Mental strength comes from attacking negativity with positive affirmations, with positive faith, declaring faith declarations or faith declaring positive minded attitudes and and words that come out of your mouth. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me is the is the sentence of winners. It's the sentence of champions. It's the declaration of champions. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You know, being mentally tough and strengthening yourself 
is one person's responsibility in this world and it's yours. It's mine. I'm responsible for myself. Preparing my mind, like first Peter says, preparing my mind for action, not preparing my man. I'm not preparing my mind for a debate with myself. I'm not preparing my mind for a debate with somebody else. I'm not preparing my mind to come up with excuses. I'm preparing my mind for action. I'm preparing my mind to take what is the step I'm preparing my mind that there are going to be some steps I get. I need to take starting today. There is a step you can take today to awaken the champion within you. A champion mindset is mentally tough, mental toughness, preparing our minds for actions. We've got to stop preparing our minds for inaction. We've got to stop living for the weekend or living for time off or living for we should enjoy our time off. We should enjoy our weekends, but we shouldn't be living for them. Why should you spend five days to enjoy two days? You should spend five minutes every morning talking to yourself, speaking words of faith over yourself, speaking words of victory over yourself, and you can enjoy every day of your life. You can enjoy the days at work and the days where you're not at work. You can enjoy everything you do when you start speaking faith into your world and into the atmosphere and piercing the darkness with your words, piercing the darkness with confessions of faith, piercing the darkness with declarations of victory, piercing the darkness in your life. Listen, everyone in this world is in darkness. Everyone faces darkness, not just at nighttime. We face darkness financially. We face darkness in relationships. We face darkness in our health. We face darkness so many in so many ways. And we have to pierce the darkness with the things that bring light. And what brings light? positive faith energy brings light, words of faith, words of encouragement, words of strength, words of declaration of who you are. You start talking like a champion. You'll start thinking like a champion. You'll start acting like a champion because as a man thinks, so is he. Now, listen, the things in this verse are really simple. They're not always easy to carry out, but they're simple to understand. Prepare your mind for action. How do you do that? You talk to your mind rather than letting it talk to you and exercise self-control. This verse says exercise self-control. That means we're not living life to control anybody else. We're not trying to control our spouse. We're not trying to control our parents, our kids, our employees. We're trying to control ourself, self-control. That's the most important thing. Proverbs 16, 32 says he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules himself, he who rules his own spirit is better than one who captures a city. What a great accomplishment if you could capture a city. But the Bible tells us it's even a greater accomplishment that you can have self-control and rule yourself. You have the power to do it. Now take action. Anxiety is going to disappear or it's going to weaken. Depression is going to weaken when you start taking action, prepare your mind for action rather than preparing yourself for excuse making and alibis. And you will find strength and adrenaline run through running through your souls. It'll shoot into your life. So mental toughness is our lesson today. Thanks for connecting and thanks for listening. I want to thank you for joining me on this brand new Think Like a Champion podcast. We're going to come to you every week with the thoughts that make you more than a conqueror, that make you realize who you are. There's going to be growth. There's going to be transformation and there's going to be a whole lot of winning ahead for you and for me and for all of us. And remember to subscribe to the podcast, share it with someone. If you got something out of this, let's invite others to be a part of this journey with us. And in our time together, I hope that thinking like a champion is starting to shape how you think every day, shape your expectations every day. Get ready to start winning in every way and start enjoying every day because that's what champions do. And also, I want to encourage you if you need some pastoring now, you got some coaching. Now you need some pastoring. Join me in the Life Changers family for church this Sunday. I can't wait to see you then. Lifechangerschurch.com, both in the house and around the world online. God bless.